ओम शांति वेलकम टू मधुबन द फॉरेस्ट ऑफ हनी वेलकम टू योर ओन होम बाबज होम गॉड्स होम आई वुड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल like to introduce myself i'm sure there may be many first timers in this group could you raise your hand first timers okay yes you must have heard the name of this physical body please put your hands down yes the name of this physical body is shiluben and i am with baba for the past 46 years since my childhood i've met brahma baba i met mama and i dedicated myself to baba in the year 1969 that is 35 years ago came to baba in 59 and was studying finished my education in 69 after graduating from B- bombay university in science and then i dedicated myself and after that i lived in many centers for a few years before i went to africa and mauritius in 74 and open centers there in africa mauritius with vedanti ben and since 76 i'm living in the headquarters so that's nearly 30 years i'm living in madhuban and have traveled to many countries maybe you know me when i came to your country hmm and you must be hearing my voice especially when baba speaks i translate do you get the transmission yes and very many brothers and sisters they you know introduce me as the master's voice <laughs> because they can understand baba only when they get the translation and then they are able to hear my voice with the translation when you are in your centers you watch through the transmission you all watch bab dada on through through television on transmission internet all those who listen to baba or watch baba raise your hand everyone okay very good so i've been given a very interesting subject to speak on it is how to remain constantly fresh it's a topic which has come from somebody and i've been told to speak on this so i was churning this morning so spanish translation translation not there who needs spanish translation spanish translation no they do nobody needs who is going to translate in spanish language is spanish language the connection hai okay aa rahi hai how many trans spanish translation to only to so i was churning this morning on what i'm going to speak on in this subject and so many thoughts came in the mind because it is very very important indeed to stay constantly fresh 
there are two types of freshness one is the physical freshness and the other is the spiritual freshness one can be physically maybe physically not very fresh but he can be spiritually very fresh and the other one can be physically very fresh but spiritually not that fresh so what does it really mean to say that we have to be constantly fresh physically as well as spiritually in order to be physically fresh of course the body has to be in good working condition what good working condition that is all the organs of the body should be functioning properly definitely your digestive system your respiratory system your uh, you know circulatory system all these physical systems the different organs in the body they should be functioning well there should be good sleep if one has good sleep at night he will wake up fresh if one has eaten properly and digested the food it has been converted into blood and energy then he will stay fresh so that is the physical part of freshness and in order to have that type of freshness of course we should eat the right diet at the right time do some physical exercise is also very essential for the body because the body needs motion all the time the more physically active we are the better the stronger the physical body can become if we are lethargic not are inactive or lazy you know physically sleeping too much or eating too much then we can be lethargic you know too tired all the time because the stomach needs time to digest so much food we are eating and then it needs time to digest and if we eat more food then we need more sleep you know all these things you see a lion a lion eats meat and when it's hungry it can run very fast to catch its prey but then after it has caught its prey it has eaten its its food and become so lethargic lethargic you understand so lazy so lazy it's the laziest animal you can think of <laughs> a lion especially after it has had a good meal but one thing i liked very much when i went to one sanctuary in india girnagir sanctuary girnar sanctuary in in gujarat we went to look at the lions and uh, they were so you know sort of having a good time resting away sleeping away i we could we could see them and our car just passed by them but they didn't do anything so i asked the person who took us he said i asked him uh, won't they just jump and run to catch the prey or something he said no they won't because they've had their meals they've had their meals and they will not even want to get up <laughs> because they eat meat and then it takes time for the meat to digest it's not so easy to digest and in order to digest they need good sleep they need good rest and therefore they become very lazy and they will never want to go for another prey if their stomach is full this was one thing which they said so even if human beings walk uh, near them they will not go after them 
So I said, that is good. At least they are better than human beings in a way. So he asked, how they are better than human beings? I said, see, a human being, if he finds his enemy, his enemy is in front of him, he will shoot him, he will kill him and allow his blood to ooze out, which will be of no use to him also. The enemy's blood will not be of use to me, no, even if I kill him. But human beings are so bad. They can't, they won't eat that, the dead body's flesh. They won't eat it. But they will not feel anything in killing that, killing their enemy. So, we see that human beings are after human blood. But they don't drink that blood, they don't eat the flesh, but still they want to kill. And see animals, even the, the most ferocious of animals, the lion, will never kill if its stomach is full. Hmm? So this is what I told him. Because he said it, no, that no, no, he will not get up because his stomach is full, he has had his food. So I was comparing with human beings. A lion will never be afraid of another lion, you know, never. Will a lion be afraid of a lion? I don't think so. <laughs> but human beings are afraid of human beings, aren't they? I see somebody, I'm so frightened of that person because I'm afraid he may do some harm to me. But a lion will never be afraid of another lion of his own kind. So this is what we say, humans have become worse than a beast. Leave us, we don't say animals, animals are better off. But we are, humans have become worse than beasts, that would not be an exaggeration. So actually, if my digestion is proper, everything is functioning properly, in Hindi we say, kam khao or gam khao. In Hindi, kam khao means eat less. Never fill your stomach to the brim. Never. Keep some space. You know, always keep some space in the stomach. Because if you fill it to the brim, that you cannot eat anything more, it's not good for your stomach. There are many, many greedy people. You know, there's an interesting joke on this in India. We have this joke, there are many Brahmin, Lokik Brahmins, Pandits, you know, Brahmins. They go to have meals in different homes, they do worship and then have meals in their homes. And then they get free food, so they will eat to the maximum, maximum, maximum. As much as they can eat, they'll eat and eat and eat and eat. And then... It becomes too much for them. So there are jokes on this. That one wife, you know, there were three ladies, they were lucky Brahmins. And one lady said, you know, my husband, he eats in every home, wherever he's invited, and not only eats, but he's very clever. He brings food home also for me to eat. So he said, I don't also have to cook because he brings home food. The other lady said, you know, my husband is so, he, he, he's so greedy, he eats and eats and then he can't get up and he needs a bed to sleep there. Because he can't get up after he has eaten. And the third one said, you know, my husband, he ate and ate and ate, ultimately he got so exhausted that his heart failed and he died. That means he ate so much that even his heart could not function. He couldn't breathe. His lungs couldn't function. His heart couldn't function and he died on the spot because he ate too much. And there's another joke on this that someone ate so much that he couldn't eat anymore. And somebody said, okay, I never mind if you've eaten too much. Take this little little tablet. This uh, It's like... Um, Mm, uh, you know, something to chew, chewable uh, tablet, just chew it because it will digest your food. And he said, well, if I had space for that chewable tablet, I would have eaten one more laddu. 
<laughs> one more sweet why have no space even for that because he ate so much so much so this is what happens with some people because of greediness and therefore we say in hindi kam khao eat less kam khao eat less and gum khao gum means sorrow so if you somebody is giving you sorrow okay forget it let go that is just face it happily don't be affected by it just go beyond it so say kam khao and gum khao so physically if we want to remain fresh the food should be digested properly in order to get it digested properly some space is always needed so some vacant space so don't fill your stomach to the brim otherwise it will never be fresh and secondly on an empty stomach do some stretching exercises very important that will keep you very very fresh because the body needs stretching the the nerves they need to be stretched then you can stay fresh and the other is spiritual freshness so let us come to the main subject because that's what we really need to be spiritually fresh of course for physical freshness there is so much in the world to be said and people do mention it we won't talk about that here but then what is spiritual freshness to be always spiritually active spiritually churning spiritually having positive thoughts spiritually beyond the influence of any negativity and in order to be that we need to be always having positive thoughts in our mind because usually it is seen that whenever we have negative thoughts in the mind immediately we become so heavy physically we may be very light very thin maybe not heavy at all but if i am spiritually having negative thoughts in my mind then i can become very very heavy baba tells in the murlis somebody can be very fat and still she is able to dance you know so well and somebody who is very lean and very skinny but you tell her to dance she said no 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 she will sit in one corner she will not even want to move her feet because internally she is not light she is heavy so the one who is internally light even if externally he may be heavy but his feet will be above the ground he can dance but not the other way round so how to be constantly fresh in the sense constantly spiritually active spiritually enjoy because very often we become like those touch me not plants you know the touch me not plant have you seen it have you seen a touch me not plant who has seen it oh acha they are small small shrubs you know small not very big trees small plants and the moment you touch it immediately it broods in down the the petals they just wither away like they just uh, go down that's all they wither away and in a second it's all that the beauty is lost but then after some times maybe a minute or so they come back they again become you know green leaves and you're able to see that plant once again but again the moment you touch it pull you know it just the droops down so easily i don't know what the reason may be it may be there are the, the nerves or the veins in the leaf the leaves which allow them to droop down so baba compares many of his children to his to touch me not plants you tell him something which he doesn't like and immediately the mood goes off hmm? and you may not even know what happened what did you say that made his mood go off you may have even forgotten that you said anything 
but his mood is off and you tell him do this no do that no you know no 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 for everything because he has become mentally spiritually heavy when something is very heavy it can't be picked up no it needs a lot of energy to pick that object up because it's very heavy so when one is internally heavy he is not able to do anything for everything he'll say no and baba very often gives a very interesting word for those who say no 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 to everything what word baba gives who who says the the one who says no no what title baba gives him eh huh? nastik nastik is a hindi word so what's the english word for it baba says he is like an atheist the word nastik in hindi which in english means atheist that atheist literally means the one who does not believe in god so who does not believe in god now if he would believe in god he would also be god fearing and above that he would be god loving but if he is saying no 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 to everything and baba calls him an atheist in the sense he doesn't care about anything he doesn't realize what karmas he is creating he does not realize what his future is going to be because his future depends on his present if his present is not right what will his future be what will he uh, i mean how will he face god how will he face the fruit of his karmas how will he be able to progress in life if he says no 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 to everything opportunities come and if he refuses those opportunities then those opportunities will never come again because they have been discarded they have been neglected they have been like you know not given respect so if you don't give respect to somebody why will he come to you again you know you go to someone's house and he doesn't respect you he ill treats you he tells you bad words or anything which you are not which are not good why should you want to go back to him again you don't have to you have your self respect so if opportunities come and we say no 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 that means we are actually discard disregarding the, those opportunities and when we disregard those opportunities what will happen they'll never come back again and then we will repent we'll have to regret for all that we have lost because we did not take a chance when the opportunity came and why we said no no or why we did not take a chance because we were internally very heavy supposing someone comes to the center and you are just there and your teacher tells you would you like to just attend to this person and would you like to give him a course and you are very good at giving courses very good but you may say no my stage is not good today i will not give okay today you refuse and tomorrow if another opportunity comes your teacher your center in charge maybe she will think twice she will think whether to tell you or not to tell you because maybe you'll say no again and therefore you lose that opportunity but you may give the excuse that why did i say no because my stage at that time was not good that's why i didn't want to do service because if my stage was not good and i gave gyan to that person then that would affect him too it would not be service it would be disservice and therefore you say you may say i don't want to give gyan to anybody because my stage is not good today but let me tell you even if your stage is not good and your teacher in charge your center in charge or whoever tells you or your opportunity comes okay to give gyan to somebody and you forget about your stage and you start giving baba's gyan immediately let me tell you you'll be blessed it will be like a miracle your stage will come up automatically without you even having to making efforts because that will act like a blessing for you 
my stage is not good and i will do service only if i am able to you know make my stage good and then i'll serve you'll say but then if you serve even if your stage is not good that service which you do of others will enable you to make your stage better even without your efforts otherwise you would have to make so much effort to elevate your stage but because you did service and you got the blessings of that service because at that time you may have the thought you should create the thought rather baba this child is yours so you are remembering baba at that time this child is yours baba he has come and you have sent him okay baba i am an instrument serving this soul baba you work through me my stage is not very good but you work through me and you have to serve this child and you surrender yourself to baba and baba will do the rest and that soul will be served so well he will he may get such a good experience through you he may even come and praise you and uh, praise and tell others also about how good you were and you may wonder oh at that time my stage wasn't good how did i do this service then you realize it wasn't me it was baba it's true it was baba because baba gets his work done somehow or the other if he won't make you the instrument then somebody else will become the instrument and therefore even if the stage is not good but you are given a chance an opportunity never lose miss it never lose it maybe it will not come again so baba keeps on telling us children you have to be mentally spiritually very very light come what may it may not be giving gyan to someone but it could be any other service serving through actions serving through thoughts serving through words we serve uh, in all three ways so in order to be spiritually fresh we have to keep in our mind that you are an only an instrument only an instrument it's very important why do we become heavy the first thought which comes is i am doing it that makes us heavy it is heavy, becoming heavy in both ways i am doing it and therefore i should get the result or i cannot do it and therefore i cannot get the result actually both are wrong i am doing it and i should get the result is wrong and i cannot do it and therefore i will not get any result even that is wrong why both are wrong because i am not doing it i am not i am only an instrument and i cannot do it is also wrong because why can't i do it i can do it with baba's help everything is possible so if i say i can't do it definitely it is wrong that means i am not taking baba's help i i cannot do it all on you know on my own i don't even remember baba at that time and on the other hand if i say i will do it even at that time i'm not remembering baba so in both instances i'm not remembering baba and if i do it but i do not get the success i will become so unhappy and if i say i can't do it even then i'm unhappy because i can't do it so both are actually negative thoughts one is the superiority complex thought and the other is the inferior inferiority complex thought both are negative in a way one is based on ego and the other is based on total inferiority and therefore baba tells us to choose the middle path and this knowledge is so wonderful everything is choose the middle path path the the other two sides are like the two extremes baba doesn't want us to go to the two extremes choose the middle path which are the two extremes one extreme end is total materialism 
totally materialistic people in this world we have we see around who are so much involved in all only the senses they go only for the taste of the senses that's all totally involved in vices lust anger greed attachment ego the five senses are working only in these vices and the others are those who have totally renounced everything everything is renounced they don't think of anything of this world nothing the, the sanyasis the hermits the recluses they think this world is all maya and they don't have to do anything with this world so they renounce but what does baba tell us children you don't have to renounce but you also don't have to become a hermit or recluse or just live only in isolation all by yourself you can't do it because humans are after all social beings we can't live in isolation nobody can a social being means we need to live in a company we need many we can't we cannot live all by ourselves so if we are to live in a gathering we have to be in a family but then in a family again baba shows us the middle path the pure family path so neither have we to become too materialistic go only for these physical gadgets of this world be attached to them become a slave of them become possessed by them you know television computer cameras what not so much and one just cannot do without them baba says even that's not good in a second you should be able to go beyond because that's the practice we have to have and the second is the other is don't think that all this is maya and therefore don't use them no no use them baba says on the contrary baba says all these modern gadgets of science they are good for your service because in this way you can serve the world through them so easily information technology has gone so far you can serve the world through it so it's a middle path is a beautiful saying live in this world but don't allow the world to live in you you live in the world but don't allow the world to live in you and therefore a beautiful example of that is the lotus what's a lotus flower it lives in a muddy pond it's born in a muddy pond it grows in a muddy pond its whole family is in the muddy pond the leaves the stems the stem the roots all are in the mud you know in that muddy pond but the lotus flower is above it. it looks so beautiful and you must have noticed that that portion of the lotus which is above the water only that portion is used for worship you will see it in the hand of vishnu you will they also show to buddha i saw somewhere to buddha they offer lotus flowers to buddha only that portion the portion which is above the the pond in the water of the pond so we can see that only that portion is surrendered to god because god wants the pure thoughts from us he wants us to surrender to him in a pure way not as impure beings but we are pure children of the purest father so that consciousness is necessary again and again to bring in our mind because unless we have that consciousness it may be difficult to stay fresh you know even in a computer the computer can get confused because you are clicking in too many places and the computer may not know what to do it can just hang you know it gets hung up or sometimes it does not know what to do it's so confused so then you have to refresh it 
there's a, there's a refresh button and you have to just press that uh, button refresh and everything comes back to normal once more so to so many thoughts in the mind and immediately that confusion can make you so heavy but then you need to refresh in yourself in order to be active once again otherwise it will lead to you to sulkiness it will lead you to hmm, withering away like a flower withers away or it can lead you like uh, to the touch me not plant hmm, drooping down and immediately the freshness is finished you will not want to do anything it's like a stage of hopelessness you will tell yourself i can't do anything it's not possible for me to do it's too much for me you know all these thoughts keep coming and the result is hopelessness and if once this hopelessness comes in life it may be very very difficult to really be back on your own feet it's like breaking a bone if you if i break my leg bone it i cannot stand on my feet leave us at running i can't even stand so in order to remain fresh all the time we have to pay attention to our thoughts and that is why baba has very lovingly told us children there are two words which you should never forget come what may not and dot these two words allow me to become fresh once again not and dot n o t not and d o t dot because if my mind is going in a negative way negative way so i'm thinking negative things about people about objects about places or situations circumstances whatever and i do come to know that this is happening immediately say it to yourself not no i'm not going to think that again i'm not going to that's also one break it's a break it's a form of a break where you you stop instantly nowadays they have you know in every car they have power brakes the car stops instantly it doesn't stop after 2 seconds also just at that very moment it stops you just apply the brake and it stops so my mind should be able to stop that thought at that very moment and therefore we need to have a very powerful break power break as what is called and the other word is dot drama drama when you say drama is like an easy way of applying a break and not is a hard way of applying the break but it will save you from many accidents sometimes you can apply the break very easily very softly and the vehicle stops is very soft because the the vehicle is not going at a very fast speed and because it's not going at a fast speed it is very easy to apply a brake you don't have to press very hard so if you are thinking of the past this happened to me that happened to me you know very often people don't think of the present or the future they think only of the past well those past things don't come back we know them they won't come back in this cycle at least they will come back only in the next cycle all the situations any situation we have gone through any scene which has happened that scene will never repeat in this cycle never somebody may be 50 years old 60 years old 40 years old however old he may be not one scene in life has ever repeated this very hall in which we are sitting these words being spoken i am speaking you are listening i am making this action this action which i am making like now will never be in the same way 
as I'm making it now. It will be a little difference. Little difference at least. I'm sitting, next moment I will change a little bit. You must have noticed when you're taking a photograph. You may take photograph every second maybe, but still, little difference will definitely be there. Action is here and then so the face will change, the neck will change, you know, a little bit. Something will, the change will definitely be there. So no two scenes are alike. And therefore, we sh why do we think of what happened in the past? But the mind is so used to thinking of the past and that makes us heavy, makes us heavy. I remember one instant, instance, one lady, you know, she was on her deathbed. And when I, somebody said, please meet her because she is so unhappy, she's crying and crying and weeping and weeping all the time. So I went to meet her. And she was just like, you know, doctor had given up hopes and she would die maybe in a few hours. So people were telling her, now remember God, remember God. But she couldn't. She was weeping and weeping and weeping all the time. So I went in front of her and I asked her, what makes you cry? You are going to go in God's lap. God is calling you. Remember Him. He's inviting you to His world. He's waiting with open arms to welcome you because she knew that she will not live. So be happy. Be, be ready. What is really upsetting you? What is giving you the sorrow? I asked her, are you attached to anything? She said, no, I'm not attached to anything. I don't care, I mean, the money, the children, the house. I'm not attached to anything. Then I asked her, then why are you weeping? She said, I can't forget the past. All that happened to me in the past. My children gave me sorrow. My husband gave me sorrow. My in-laws gave me sorrow, you know. Though they gave me so much sorrow, so much sorrow, so much sorrow. I said, I mean, just imagine, poor thing, I felt so sorry for her. That is gone, it's dead, it's finished, it won't come back again. Maybe those whom she was remembering, even they were dead and gone. But still, she was remembering her past. Her husband had also died many years ago. But she said, my husband gave me so much sorrow. <laughs> he used to beat me. He used to do this to me. He used to do that, you know. I, then I, well, what to tell when she's dying? You know, just a few hours to, serve, to live. Unfortunately, I should say that she couldn't understand that now it was time to just be with God because she had no knowledge. And at that time, how to give her the knowledge that she's a soul, she's a child of God and this is drama, how to make her understand. And because she was in that upset state of mind, she was so heavy, it was even worse for her. That even maybe she wasn't able to leave her body also easily because her heaviness was there in her. And if somebody is light, the soul can leave the body in a second. It's like Baba gives an example, you take hair out of the butter. If the hair goes in, the, in butter and you remove it, so easy it is to remove, is it not? But if your hair goes in bread or chapati, roti, and you are trying to pull it out, maybe if it's if that thing is hard, then it will come out bit by bit. It won't come out fully. So the soul is not even able to leave the body because of that heaviness. So even in order for the soul to leave the body, one needs to be light. Yeah, it's true. And therefore Baba says, if as a Brahmin we know how to be light and still if we are not light, we are very unfortunate people. 
So how to be constantly fresh and constantly light? First of all, as Dadi Janki was mentioning yesterday, I think in the class she was mentioning in Pandav Bhavan, she was saying there's a book written. I don't know. I haven't seen that book. Bestower and which book is it? Huh? Bestower and benefactor. There's a thing. I haven't seen it. Who has that? who has that book? Oh, you have it here. Acha. Bestower and benefactor is it? So she was mentioning about that book and uh, she was mentioning how somebody read it and appreciated it and took so much benefit from that book. So anyway, maybe after class someone can show it to me because I haven't seen it, if you have it here. But then she was mentioning it, that how actually, so I was thinking today that these two words as Baba has mentioned, bestower and benefactor, these two words can make us so light. When Baba talks about big heart, Baba talks about generosity, Baba talks about letting go, well, these are the things which make us fresh, remain fresh all the time. What happens is we stick on to something. That makes us heavy. Now, for example, we give this example, don't we? I'm sitting on this chair and I uh, want to get up, but if I catch hold of this chair and then get up, how will I be able to get up? And in order to get up, I have to be light, otherwise I can't get up. I can't pick the chair with me and get up. I have to just be away from the chair, you know, and then only I'll be able to get up easily because I'll be light. And therefore, the art of letting go, let go of the past, past is past as Baba says. Some people don't find it so easy. They don't find it easy. Why they are not able to find it so easy? Because the drama knowledge is not there in their intellect. And therefore Baba says, not and dot. Dot can be applied in a smooth way and not is applied in a hard way. Sometimes Baba says, you should punish yourself if you are not able to uh, you know, concentrate if you are not able to remember Baba. So why are they not able to remember Baba? Because they are not able to apply the knot and dot. That's why. There are waste thoughts. Unwanted thoughts. And unwanted thoughts are usually of the past or the future. Even if they are of the present, they are unwanted anyway. Like we sometimes say that what comes first? Supposing you have two files, and on one it is written urgent, on the other it is written important. Which file will you take up first? Yes? Which file will you take up first, urgent or important? Huh? Urgent. But why did that work become urgent? Actually nothing is ever urgent. If it becomes urgent, actually it was important. But you did not do it in time, therefore it became urgent. No work is really urgent, it is important. Important, yes. But if done in time, it remains important and you get the results in time. But if we this, uh, if we neglect it, then it becomes urgent and then we are not able to do it in time. <coughs> so, when I say dot and not, dot is like the important matter. And when we say not, it becomes the urgent matter. Just like you see an obstacle coming in front of you and you are at a distance and your speed is fast. A good driver will slow down, slow down, use his brake, use his brake and slow down, slow down without having to apply a very drastic, you know, strong brake. But slowly, 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 slowly he will keep on lowering his speed, lowering his speed, lowering his speed and then he'll be able to come to a standstill where the brake, where the obstacle comes or he'll be able to cross over without even his, he'll be affected by the obstacles. So that's what Baba says, either use the drama 
in the stage of a drama what we do is we are able to apply a full stop to the past we are able to lessen our speed of waste thoughts gradually 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 and then go to the positive side easily but if we are not able to do that then we need to have a drastic not but if these two again are the are one side of the situation the other side of the situation is a positive side of the situation as baba says bestower and uh, benefactor that's a positive side of a situation like baba gave an example one is somebody is cursing you somebody is speaking ill of you somebody is uh, you know defaming you now what will you do it's some definitely some bad karma with you definitely so in order to finish that bad karma what you have to do is not defame him back not curse him back not speak ill of him back because that will only increase the karma instead what do you do you think good of him you speak good of him you become helpful to him you start praising him he has been speaking ill of you and you start praising him can you do that can you do that this is called generosity this is called bestower stage this is called benefactor stage don't take revenge but change yourself so when it is said don't take revenge and change yourself what does it mean it means he may be having a waste thoughts about you or you know having um, speaking ill of you whatever but you think good of him change yourself means your thoughts should be good about him you give him the blessings he may be cursing you and if you bless him then that curse will not affect you it will not affect you just like in the olden days the soldiers used to carry you know sword in one hand and a shield in the other hand and they used to wear an armor so the sword was meant for attack but the shield and the armor was meant for defense so if an enemy would be little bit far away they would run and you know hit the um, hit the enemy but if the enemy was too close then they had the weapons of defense the shield they would put in front so that the other enemies um, sword would not be able to hit them or even if they it did hit they had the armor on and they would be saved protected so one weapon for def- for attack but two weapons for defense so to be on the defensive side you don't have to be always on the attack side you have you can be on the defensive side too that will save you it will help you much better than to be on the attack side and the result will be that your no karmas will be created you will be only finishing off the past karmas like they show you know in the battle between ram and ravan or the battle between krishna and kans the battle between devils and the gods they always show that the devils used all their weapons used all their impure methods of attacking 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 but the deities did nothing ram did nothing you know krishna did nothing they that when they showed the battle on the contrary with their power they just defended themselves so that the result was those attacks which they were getting did not affect them and the result was those enemies or the devils who were attacking their power finished because they used up all the weapons all the weapons and the deities used the defensive side of keeping themselves protected and safe and when all the weapons of the enemy side were finished then they used their attack and finished the enemy so that was the method like somebody uses a missile and the other one uses the anti missile to cut off the missile and make him use all his missiles and so that his missiles finish because with my anti missiles i'm able to cut off the missiles and then when all his missiles are finished i use the missile to kill the enemy so that's how we use it that's the method 
not uh, allow the missile to attack me, but I use the anti-missile. Like for example, Baba says, if somebody is in a state of anger, what should you do? Not show anger, but on the contrary, be more peaceful, more peaceful. And my peace will cut off his anger. And ultimately, with that, first the peace will be a defensive weapon. And then it will be the attacking weapon. You know, the peace will become an attacking weapon. How? With the my power of peace, I will be able to give power to that soul to become peaceful. First, the attack will come to me. But my power of peace is making me defensive and I'm able to withstand or hold my peace. I don't give up my peace. Maybe it's not of helping him, but at least it is helping me. So that's my defensive weapon. And then when he finishes all his weapons, He gets drained out, everything is over, and then my peace begins to work and then he becomes peaceful. That's the positive side. But if one is negative and I am negative too, two minuses don't make a plus. They become minus only. It's not a plus. It's like adding fuel to fire. So that's why Baba says bestover stage and benefactor stage. When somebody is in a state of anger, he is in a state of peacelessness. No person who is peaceful will ever be in a state of anger. Never. Peace and anger don't go together. And therefore, when one is in that peaceless stage, he is empty. And therefore, I need to give peace to that soul. That's why I become a bestower. That's why I become a benefactor. I think of the benefit of that soul. Not what harm he is doing to me because I am unharmed. It's like a mud pot and a metal pot. A mud pot may try to attack a metal pot. You know, a pot made of maybe copper, made of iron, whatever. But that mud pot may think, well, I am more beautiful because it's decorative. But then, what's the use? It's not the, that the copper pot or the iron pot which is going to be destroyed. It's going to, it's, it will be the mud pot which will be destroyed because the mud is, it is all fragile. So somebody who is in a state of anger is very fragile. The one who is cursing is very fragile, very delicate, very soft, easily hurt. But I am strong. You know, you must have seen very many toys which have which have the center of gravity at the bottom. The bottom is very heavy, very heavy. The upper portion is maybe very light. And even if they are moved, you know, they are shaken, the head is shaken, the top is shaken. It may seem that it is shaken, but then it comes back to its original place. It doesn't fall off. But if the center of gravity is not at the bottom, it's somewhere at the top, and is shaken once, immediately it falls off. And therefore, you know, usually many toys, they are made, the bottom is made very heavy, so that even if they are rocking, it, they don't really fall because the bottom is strong. So this is what Baba wants us to be in order to be fresh all the time. That come what may, nothing should make us droop down, nothing should really be instrumental for harming the soul, nothing should really work on us in a negative way. Come what may, let it be anything. So not of course is the last target, but the first is dot. First is dot and then the bestover stage, the benefactor stage, but if nothing works, then of course not. It's like operation is the last resort. It's not the first resort. First resort is different types of medicines. You, they need to be used. But if nothing helps, okay, the last resort is an operation. So to be strict with yourself, 
to be strict in a strong way with the self that's the last resort let the positive side be there first using the positive thoughts about the self positive thoughts about others positive thoughts about the drama positive thoughts about everything whatever is coming in my way in a negative way see the positive side and that will keep me fresh but if i am not able to think in that way then it's like eating heavy food and heavy food will definitely make me heavy so we have to learn this art of applying a dot becoming generous the stover letting go and then light and ultimately if nothing works then be strict with yourself give yourself punishment why did i think like this in this way why did i speak like this why did i do like this and give some punishment what type of punishment will you give to yourself when nothing else works you know somebody asked me a question that supposing in madhuvan someone does something wrong and uh, what type of punishment does dadi give somebody asked me this question so as it will it depends what type of action he did if it was definitely against the maryadas disciplines principles of the yagya then of course dadi may tell him to vacate to leave that's a very drastic step that's a very drastic step very the last step the last resort but otherwise what type of punishment dadi would give him dadi would tell him okay today whole day go and sit in baba's room whole day keep silence for whole day don't talk anything don't do any don't do your work to in no karma yoga also for you just sit in one place sit in baba's room whole day sometimes ba dadi will say okay don't eat food today yeah 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 why not it happens so whole day in baba's room or in your room do studying reading don't talk to anyone don't go to the office don't go uh, to your department because madhuban resident means anybody who is living in madhuban having a department having some responsibility so just remember baba think of nothing else just go beyond and the next day he is back to normal and uh, he has totally changed so his punishment is over he has finished his karma yes so this is what baba teaches us so give yourself some punishment punishment may be not in a negative way but in a very positive way which is useful for the soul so that i am benefited through that in bhakti they do a lot yeah you know why they do so much penance but baba says don't give penance to your body in this way not necessary because his body is very valuable but yes spiritually you can train yourself you can teach yourself you can uh, change yourself you can make a determined thought you can give a promise to yourself and that will bring a change in you and make you light once again and the past will be forgotten thoughts about others will be forgotten what baba says parichintan paradarshan thinking of others you know talking about others in a second you can go beyond so this is what we have to learn because sangam yuga is very short very short and maybe these few years i don't know how much more time we are going to get to make efforts every day we are receiving so much news of what's happening around the world somebody was telling me the other day that this year now it's october this year every 10 days there's an earthquake in some part of the world every 10 days because even the earth is becoming fragile now you know things are changing and today they say is full moon it's sharad purnima it's the day in india the winter begins from today onwards it's full moon today and it's also eclipse day today moon eclipse today so they say it is not a good sign the change of weather and of moon eclipse today it 
usually there's eclipse and there was a sun eclipse recently in this very month itself in october so moon eclipse sun eclipse both in one month this is not a good sign everyone is saying the same thing not a good sign not a good sign so it's true because things are changing and we have to be ready we have to be prepared baba is preparing us beforehand we are definitely very very fortunate indeed to have met baba to have realized this knowledge to have realized ourselves to have realized the drama but whatever happens is very very accurate in the drama it's very very beneficial there's always an advantage to everything that's happening in the drama so think of that and before something happens when we'll not be able to do anything we need to fill in ourselves to, to face that situation and therefore we have to keep ourselves fresh all the time come what may come what may take the opportunity don't miss any opportunity don't lose any chances don't say no for any type of service every moment should be used in a worthwhile way and you will see how you will fly hmm? and you will be fresh all the time many people tell me sister you have been translating for the past 40 years don't you get tired i said tired for what tired i mean i usually you know in madhuban i conduct raj yoga meditation camps so raj yoga meditation camps means to every group which comes i teach them knowledge about soul knowledge about the supreme soul knowledge you know all the what as you give the course so i must have given such courses you know how many thousands and thousands of times so somebody asked me don't you get fed up of giving knowledge of the soul again and again hmm? so why should you get fed up because every time you are saying it in a different way every time your stage is rising your inner stage is getting better and better and you are saying with that consciousness why should you get bored baba has been telling us for the past 70 years children be soul conscious be soul conscious be soul conscious do you does he get bored uh, was of saying that and we still haven't become soul conscious completely someone once asked me sister Every whenever I see you're always smiling. Don't you get tired? I said, tired of smiling? Why should you be tired of smiling? She said, she said, whenever I see you're always smiling. I said, you get tired means something different outside, something different inside. Only then you can get tired. It's like you're waiting for yourself to be photographed, and somebody says, smile please, and you're smiling. Yeah? And he takes time to. click you know to, to adjust and it takes time you say come on be quick because you're fed up of smiling <laughs> but should one be fed up of smiling shouldn't that be natural and normal part of life but why do we get fed up because it's un, it has become unnatural so to be light to be fresh to be happy to be unperturbed to be detached to be loving this should be so natural in us not come in us through efforts this is what is important only then we can be fresh all the time see madhuban whole year round baba's children come whole year service now whole year is not just in these months whole year because before maybe it was before shanti van came into existence or even before gyan sarovar came into existence it was just madhuban gyan sarovar came into existence only after 94 so it's just 10 years not before that and before it was just madhuban and uh, we used to have programs in madhuban madhuban was so small but uh, we used to have so much of free time July August September was free time for us and we used to go traveling you know to different parts of India even abroad three months i remember 91 i could spare time to be in europe for three months i was traveling all over europe 
there was time july august and september months in india are rainy season and no service at all here because hardly people came used to come at that time to mount abu during rainy season but now it's all year round season all year round before when baba was there in sakar that time winter was so disgusting winter here that even baba never stayed in madhuban doctor advised baba to go to warmer places you know because mount abu was very cold so baba used to go to bombay because bombay is near uh, the sea sea shore so near the sea therefore it's always very you know it's same weather throughout the year is no no drastic changes so baba used to go to bombay in december january february he never lived in my stayed in madhuban so madhuban was empty during those months because baba was in bombay sakar baba so no service here baba meant when baba was here it was service when baba was not here he was somewhere else no service so nobody used to come to madhuban also but when baba became aware then we started having bathis okay even then july august september no not no programs but now all year round all year whole year there's not a single day when we say today no guests no babas children no groups in madhuban whole year round some or the other program is always there so people ask don't you get bored because whole year we are here we are hardly able to go out yes because even if i get invitation i'm not able to go out because so many programs in madhuban no change but we say why do we need a change baba's children are there these faces are changing <laughs> the other change i don't want we don't need but these faces are changing we are getting newer children every year every year bigger groups newer experiences every year so that's the change and that is what we want in life don't we that's why we have surrendered to baba so why should we get bored if why does one get bored because he takes everything in a mechanical way you are doing one type of job then you are doing only that job only that job maybe you will get bored but it may be the same job but do it in a different way be more creative and if you are creative it will be felt new once again so you will not get bored so in order to be fresh all the time we have to learn how to be creative every time something is new then we can be fresh all the time then only we can really feel that we are doing something different otherwise one can get bored because there's no novelty no newness no uh, you know change so change is a must but that can be brought about through creativity creative thinking even like meditation it's not just one type of thought in the mind all the time people chant mantra so same mantra again 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 and again it's no no creativity but here meditation is creativity create new thoughts go into the depth of that thought go into the depth of baba's virtues there's so much to be creative in and the result will be novelty newness in life and you'll never get bored and you'll be fresh all the time okay yes any questions any questions yes yeah get it forgive how will you combine forgiveness with punishment yes okay this is a very interesting question because baba sometimes says you should learn to forgive yourself but then sometimes baba says you should punish yourself now both are totally opposite each other should you forgive yourself or should you punish yourself hmm fine so it's different for different occasions on some occasion you should be able to forgive yourself because very often we are not able to forgive ourselves if i do something wrong oh i have done this wrong i have done this wrong i regret i regret i feel so sorry i feel so sorry i just can't forget it i can't forget even if i want to forget i can't forget it so at that time you have to learn to forgive yourself 
I forgive myself means if I have done something wrong, I should be able to give a full stop by saying, okay, never mind, I have learned a lesson from it. I will never do it again. Okay, Baba, I surrender it to you. I have learned from it and I promise you, Baba, I will not repeat it. And, uh, okay, Baba, you forgive me. Okay, I have forgiven myself and Baba, you also forgive me. Never mind, tell this to Baba. And give it a full stop. Okay, drama, I learned a lesson from it. This is called forgiveness. The other is punishment. Supposing you are thinking ill of somebody, of somebody else. Forgiveness is for the self. It could be for somebody else also. You know, others, you can forgive very easily. It's not difficult to forgive. If you have a generous heart, you can forgive very easily. Okay, doesn't matter. Forget it. Forgive. I forgive him. You are able to let go. You forgive somebody else. But sometimes it's easy to forgive but not forget. You can't forget it. Forgive you may, the other one. But forget you cannot. Because you keep remembering, oh he gave me so much sorrow. Maybe you didn't give him sorrow back. That means you forgave him. But you can't forget it and therefore that gives you the sorrow. So we have to learn this art of forgetting also. In order to forget, we need to punish the self. Now how do I punish the self? Punish the self means that I tell Baba, Baba, today I will remember nothing else except you. Take it in the form of a punishment. Punishment is like being strict with yourself. Not allowing your mind to wander. Not allowing your senses to do something which is against your will. That's what it is. Like you have a prisoner and there's a prisoner and he is chained. So when he is chained, what happens? He's not able to do anything no? because he's chained. His leg, his foot is changed, leg chained. And he can't run. His hand is, there's a handcuff around his hand. So he cannot... Uh, do raise his hand or take anything from with his hand. So it's like change. It, that's a punishment for him. So supposing my eyes have deceived me. I have seen something which I should not have seen. Okay, whole day today, I will not see anyone. This is like a punishment. So you are changing yourself. In this way you are changing yourself. This is called punishment for the self. And forgiving the self when you have done something wrong, you can't forget it, you can't forgive it, then you have to apply a full stop by telling Baba, okay Baba, it's finished, I promise Baba, I will not repeat it. So this little, little subtle difference between, between forgiveness and punishment. The subtle difference, I think uh, I'm trying to, I've been able to explain. Okay, who, who said it? Who asked this question? Okay. Little bit difference is there. So in some places you have to forgive yourself. In some places you have to punish yourself. In order to change yourself. Okay? Om Shanti. Any other question? Yeah. Sister is saying that it's very easy to handle law kicks. But difficult to handle Brahmins. <laughs> because all are jnani souls, knowledgeable souls, no? So how can you handle them? Lokik you are easily able to handle. That's why Baba very often says that when you are giving knowledge to somebody outsider, you are donating knowledge, no doubt. But when, but when you are giving it in your, in Baba's family to the brother Brahmins, it is not donation, it is helping. So it's a very soft word, helping the other one. Similarly, it's easy to tell Gyan to outsiders, but you can't tell Gyan to Brahmins, no? because they know it. They know. You don't have to tell them. So the easiest thing is just give your good wishes. No, That is the best thing to do. And change yourself. Because you cannot give Gyan. Even sometimes to outsiders you can't give Gyan. But if you are able to change yourself and you are able to give good wishes, then automatically they will understand and they will learn. Maybe you don't have, you're not able to give gyan to them. 
I think it should go even for outsiders. You can't give gyan to all the outsiders. Who asked this question? Yeah. So, even to lokiks, you can't always give gyan. They won't, don't want to listen to you. So, what will you do at that time? Just give your good wishes. So, even to Brahmins, give your good wishes. And change yourself. Okay. That's it, no? Your good wishes means your pure thoughts. So your pure thoughts will change the person. Your words may not change. Sometimes even actions don't change. Only thoughts are the most powerful weapons. Only they can change. And those thoughts have to be positive thoughts about the other one. Only then the change can come. Not otherwise. Okay? Om Shanti.